Welcome to this video where we look to convert word equations into symbol equations. And this really is the culmination of two or three different areas of chemistry uh, being put together um, to produce symbol equations. Um, and so what, before even attempting uh, to write symbol equations from scratch, uh, you need to be able to write the formula of compounds using valency tables. So hopefully you can do that and balance symbol equations which have been given to you uh, using big numbers. So hopefully you can do that. And I've covered both those things in previous videos. Uh, now, usually when we write out a symbol equation, the elements which appear in the equation as elements, uh, and what I mean by that is, let's take for example, um, if I react uh, magnesium with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. So let's just look at the magnesium and the magnesium oxide to start with. And I'm just going to write the formula down there. So on the left hand side of the equation when the magnesium is reacting it's an element. When it forms magnesium oxide it is a compound. And when we're writing down the elements, i.e. the magnesium, we need to recognize which elements exist as diatomic molecules. And to do that, it's quite easy to recognise them if we use our periodic table. Because, wonderfully, our periodic table contains the diatomic elements here. So, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and astatine are the elements which appear in equations as diatomic molecules. Now they, they only they're only diatomic when they are elements. So for example, oxygen, when it's on its own, is O2. However, when it's with something else, when it's bonded to something else in a compound, it might be O, it might be O2, it might be O3. That depends on the valency of both the oxide and the thing it's bonded to. So we have N2, O2, F2, Cl2, etc. And I've heard teachers talking about the magic seven because it looks like a seven on the periodic table. There's one which doesn't appear in the magic seven, and that's hydrogen. So hydrogen, when it appears, is H2. So bear that in mind when you're writing out your equations. Um, it would make sense to print out these handouts uh, before doing the rest of the tutorial. Uh, the next slide has a valency table on it, uh, and that will be helpful, obviously, for writing balanced symbol equations. So, let's get cracking. Okay, now I'm going to give you five examples of equations, and I want us to write the equations, the symbol equations, from the word equations using the following steps. So, we're going to write out the symbols for the metallic elements in the equation. We're going to write the symbols for the non-metallic elements in the equation. And here I want us to remember the magic seven. Once we've sorted the elements, then we move on to the compounds. So we write the formulae for the compounds in the equation. Quite often we're going to need to use our valency table to help, help us uh, work out what the formulae are. Sometimes we have acids and you need to learn these okay you don't get given these in the exam so you need to know that hydrochloric is HCl sulfuric H2SO4 and nitric is HNO3 and only after we've done all the writing of the formula do we get to use big numbers right at the end so let's get started so write the symbols for the metallic elements in the equation right uh, well, there's only one metallic element, and that's magnesium. So I'm going to write Mg down here. Okay, I'm going to put some blanks in. And so I've done step one. Uh, write the symbols for the non-metallic elements in the equation. Well, the non-metallic element is hydrogen. Does it appear as a diatomic element? Yes, it does. So check back to the first slide where I showed you which ones appeared as diatomic molecules, so we'll write it out as H2. 
And now we need to look at the formula of our compounds, hydrochloric acid and magnesium chloride. Well, hydrochloric acid, I'm afraid, is one of those ones you've got to learn, HCl. So we'll put that in here, HCl. And magnesium chloride, well, we're going to need to use our valency table. So have a look at the valency of magnesium and the valency of chloride. So the valency of magnesium is 2 and chloride is 1. Remember what to do, we swap them over. So the 1 goes at the top and the 2 goes down here. So there's a 1 for magnesium and a 2 for Cl. So we write it down as MgCl2. And now, and only now, do we need to balance. And that's putting big numbers at the start of our particles in the equation to make sure we have an equal number of atoms on the left as on the right. So, we could do this with a table, okay? but I'm hoping we might be at a point now where we don't necessarily need a table of elements. Um, so, let's do a quick count up. So, we've got one magnesium and one magnesium. So, magnesium is okay. We've got one hydrogen and two hydrogen. So, hydrogen is not balanced. One chlorine, two chlorine. So, chlorine isn't balanced. So let's see if putting a 2 here to double those helps. Magnesium was already sorted, but we've now got 2 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens, 2 Cl's, 2 Cl's. And that equation is now balanced. Notice I didn't try inserting the 2 somewhere in the middle here. I didn't start adding little numbers to try and balance it. We write the formulae out, and only then do we use big numbers. And big numbers at the start particles not in the middle. Right, let's get on with the next example. So, example two. Oh, this is a great reaction. Uh, put lithium in water, uh, effervesces furiously, it floats on top of the water, it moves around and eventually disappears because it's formed a soluble product, lithium hydroxide. You don't need to know any of that though to write out a balanced equation. So, let's start with metallic elements. Okay, so lithium is metallic, so we'll write down Li. Uh, symbols for the non-metallic elements in the equation. Well, the only non-metallic element is hydrogen. Um, and is hydrogen diatomic? Which is the question we always have to ask ourselves. Is it in the magic seven? Uh, well, it is diatomic, if we look back at the first slide. So hydrogen is H2. Right, write down the formulae for the compounds in the equation. Well, water, um, I hope that's nice and straightforward. We've got H2O. And then lithium hydroxide, we're going to need to use the valency table. So let's have a look at our valency table. So lithium has a valency of 1. Hydroxide has a valency of 1. Ah, they're both the same. So if they're both the same, we just have one of each. So LiOH. And at this point, we're all the way down here. We now just need to balance. And I'm going to use a different colour for balancing. Um, again, let's, let's top things up. So we've got one lithium here, one lithium over here. So lithium seems sorted to start with. One oxygen, one oxygen. Two hydrogens, one, two, three hydrogens. So hydrogens have messed up the equation kind of thing. So we now need to put some big numbers in to balance this. Right, well, what about if we stick a 2 over here? Okay, we were short of some hydrogens earlier, so why don't we put a 2 here? Now that means we've got four hydrogens here. We've got 2, 3. Ah, but if I put another 2 here... That means that I've got another two hydrogens, which means hydrogens we've now got four of. Oxygen, we've got two. Oh, I've got two of those. Lithium, oh, two of those. And only one here. So let's have a go at putting a two in there for lithium. Okay, and it might help you then just to do a quick check. We need to check lithium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Those are the things involved. Um, so lithium, we've got two 
Ooh, uh, I'm not quite sure what button I've pressed, but uh, it's doing something slightly bizarre. Um, and I'm just going to talk with... Uh, ah, may, may the weird icon disappear. Um, you obviously can't see the weird icons that appear. Um, so let's have a look. We've got two lithiums here and two lithiums here. So that's great. We've got lithium fixed. Uh, oxygen, we've got two oxygens here, two oxygens here. That's wonderful. We've got oxygen fixed. And then we've got four hydrogens, two, three, four hydrogens over there. So hydrogen is fixed. So wonderfully, we have balanced that second example. And I'm going to go through the rest of the examples in the next video.